Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is New Kingdom Sowers. This is a one to two player card game for ages 10 and up, and it takes roughly about 15 minutes to play. In the game, you are playing the biblical parable about the sower, in which case you're going to have a sower and you're gonna be attempting to sow seeds in the field. Your objective is to place 10 seeds down in order in the good soil. You'll be using actions to manage the cards in your hand, allowing you to draw more cards from your deck Deck, place cards onto the path, into the thorny soil, and eventually into the good soil. The way you win is simple. The first player to put that row of 1 through 10 of the seeds that you need is going to be the winner. Will you score the points faster in this game all about kind of making the best opportunity with what you have, or are you going to be left in the dust? <laughs> Quite literally. To begin setup for the game, the first thing you do is you take out the main game board and you place it within reach of all players. Make sure you place it on the sides so that each player is going to get their own unique side to the game board. Hopefully the path is on your right and then the good soil is on your left. Each player is also going to get a character. You have Aguila and you have Priscilla. You're going to shuffle their decks and you're going to draw four cards and that will be your starting hand. Each player is also going to get a player reference, and you'll have the rules and, of course, the box outside of the game board. All right, let's go ahead and talk about how to play now. It's a really simple setup. Playing the game New Kingdom Sowers is as simple as setting it up. How it works is the first player is going to have a hand of four cards, and on their turn, they're going to start by drawing a card from their deck. Then you'll have your five cards and you're going to go ahead and play a card from your hand into any of the four different areas. The path, the rocky soil, the thorny soil, or the good soil. Each of these will do a different effect that you're going to need in order to place all the cards you need into the good soil area from one to ten. The first is the path and how that works is you'll take a white yellow card, you'll place it face down on the path right above there, and you'll draw a card from your deck. From there, you will then take a card from your hand, uh, or sorry, you'll take a card from the thorny soil or rocky soil and put it back into your hand. This is a way in which you can get rid of cards you don't want and pick up cards that you've either saved or placed onto the rocky soil that you can no longer uh, draw more cards because maybe the rocky soil has lower cards that are yellow than you can play. And I'll make sense of that right now. Basically, the rocky soil, you can place it there, and when you do, you're gonna be placing from a high to low. If I play an eight, you may not play a nine, but you can play a seven, six, five, or four, so on and so forth. When you play on this rocky soil area, you'll draw two cards from your deck, and then you're gonna go ahead and play an extra action, but you cannot place on the rocky soil again. You can play on the path, you can play on the thorny soil, or you can play one card to the good soil. The next action is the thorny soil. Most likely you'll be placing black cards, black so cards that you cannot use. And the reason why you can't use them might be because maybe you have a one and a two and then a four and you can't play that four because you don't have the three. You can save it here as opposed to in your hand. So you'll take one of those cards and place it down into the thorny soil. Additionally, when you play into the thorny soil, you'll be able to draw three cards from your deck. When you do, you'll take four cards from your deck and you'll place them down on the bottom of your deck or top of your deck in any order. The last action is the good soil. And the good soil is where you can play as many cards as you want as long as the number starts with one and proceeds down. If you already have one, two, three there, you have to play four all the way down to 10. And so your objective in the game is to play those cards and you're trying to place them down in order. So for instance, if I have this hand here, I can choose to play on the good soil for my turn. And I can go, here's my one, and here's my two black card, and here's my three, which will always be face up. Uh, now I'm gonna be looking for four, five, six, and so on. This can all be done in a single turn if I only play here. However, if I play in the rocky soil, remember, you can only play one card in the good soil after placing there. Um, additionally, you're basically going to have to discard down at the end of your turn to seven cards. Uh, when you discard, you're simply going to be putting them into the path. They'll be face down to the path, and typically it's going to be yellow cards. If you place anything else there, you're going to lose the game. So be very careful with this. And you're going to go back and forth. On your turn, draw a card, place a card in one of the four areas, and then do what it says. In this case, with the path, you'll be able to draw and then pick up one of the cards you placed down or your opponent's placed down in either the rocky soil or the card that you placed in your thorny soil. The rocky soil will let you draw two and then place one card in either the path, thorny soil, or good soil. The thorny soil will let you draw those three and then have to place a four on top or bottom of your deck. And then the good soil, you can place as many black cards as you can, hitting ten. If you hit 10 before your opponent, the game is over and you have won. That's simple. There's no scoring. There's no points. It's just the person who's most efficient and can play their cards down first is the winner. 
A few caveats for New Kingdom Sowers, and the first is that the path is typically a way in which you can go ahead and not only draw a card, but also gather a card that you previously placed down in the thorny soil. Sometimes you can't play black cards, and so you want to save them in order for you to play them later. I have a 1 through 4 in my hand, and then I have a 10. Well, I might have to actually put that card in the bottom of my deck, or if I'm not careful, it might go somewhere else. And so placing the thorny soil, letting me draw new cards and then rearrange my deck can be beneficial. It's also a good way to uh, get rid of cards. And so the white is all a yellow space, the rocky soil is all about drawing and playing a bonus action, the thorny is all about saving cards, the path is all about collecting cards you previously played, and the good soil is how you win placing them down in order, manipulating your hand to best make a game. Now, this is a pretty light game. There's some light strategy to it, and you're trying to basically manipulate your hand as best as possible. It's a straightforward and simple game. It's not super complex or quick, and sometimes, or long, I should say, it is quick, and sometimes you may not get the best hand size. Sometimes it might come down to, if you have one through four in your hand to start with, you're gonna get that extra luck, and it'll be more challenging for your opponent to come back. But with careful placement, if you can place better than your opponents and choose spaces, accurately and correctly, you're going to do really well. Another cool thing to know about this game is when you have the rocky soil and you place four cards there, all those cards will go to the path. But if there is uh, only three cards, and let's say that on top is one, in order to be able to play there again, you'll have to take a card, place it in the path, and then remove the card, put it into your hand from the rocky soil. So in any case, cards will get discarded if there's enough of them here, but if not, you can kind of lock your opponent out from drawing extra because that space is so important. It's so relevant to draw additional cards. So kind of locking your opponent out, forcing them to make other choices with the thorny soil or the path might be in your best interest. And the good soil is very simple. Placing down one card in the good soil is not usually worth it because you could instead do something like, like placing in the rocky soil. But if you have a whole lineup of the cards in your hand, kind of like Gin Rummy, that's when you'll want to do it. And it feels good to do it as well. The theme in the game is there. You're basically placing down the field. This whole board makes up your field and each of the different locations represent different types of fields based on the biblical verse, or I should say probably a parable, right? Um, and so it feels really good to place. It feels really good to gather and maybe at your hand. What's also cool about this game is while it is light and is a strictly straightforward type of strategies here, the game is really tight. It could come down to just one turn where you actually accomplish the game's goal before your opponent does. With a limited number of cards in your deck of just 10 cards that are black and 10 that are yellow, you're going to be manipulating all the cards in here and probably going through the entire deck once before the game is over. And it's all about how you construct your deck and choose to place cards in certain ways that will end up allowing you to be one step ahead of your opponent. It's a light, fun card game that's all about manipulation and controlling your actions. I love these type of games. They're fun, they're quick, they're easy to teach, and they have a complexity about them and a unique replayability aspect to them because each player will play the game just a little differently, even with the limited actions available to you. If you're looking for a light card game with a cool little theme and a unique idea of hand management and card placement, then Kingdom Sowers is gonna be a solid choice for you. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game New Kingdom Sowers by New Kingdom Gaming. If you're interested in picking up this title, like I said before, there is a link down below in the description. And if you'd like even more so to help us out, we'd greatly appreciate it. You can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification next to it so that you can see more of our videos as they come out. Live streams are every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, but not this Sunday. And also, we have a Whatnot stream on Wednesdays at 6.30 as well. Okay guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to sowing my seeds in the field and securing all of my good soil before you next time.